Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus, thanking you for the grace, love, and forgiveness that you've given us because we put our trust in your Son. Father, we come together this afternoon to re remember a dear saint and remember a dear loved one. We pray, Father, that your special comfort and encouragement on their family. We ask you, Lord, that those friends and fellow church members that will miss her presence, we pray, Father, for your comfort and encouragement to them. We thank you, Lord, that you've been gracious to us and has given us Miss Orly for the time that we, she's been among us. And we just pray, Father, that as she imitated Jesus, so we too will imitate her life to bring glory to you and to your son Jesus, for it's in his name that we pray. Amen.
in case you hadn't figured it out, uh, one of the things that she and I had in common was that we loved Southern gospel music. And the second thing that we had in common was that we both liked the cathedrals. <laughs> and on top of that, that we both spent some time in Arkansas. So uh, I think our director is going to come and lead us in a congregational song, if you know the words. Uh, this also was one of her favorite songs, but not written particularly Southern Gospel, but it's a great message in this song. I handed out the sheet there, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Uh, we're just going to do the first verse in that sheet, so please sing out with me. That way I don't sound like a solo. All right. She was born to Perry and Martha Thomason Grogan in Harrison, Arkansas on April the 23rd, 1923. She was raised on a farm and graduated from Ridgeway High School, Harrison, Arkansas. After graduation, she worked several jobs in Arkansas before moving to Wichita to work in the defense plants. She was a Rosie the Riveter and helped build the B-29s. She was very proud of the fact that she helped with the war effort working for both Cessna and Boeing facilities. She met her husband James when uh, they were both working at Cessna. They were married on March the 6th, 1944. After the war, they moved to Lovell, Oklahoma, and farming became their life. They later moved to rural Orlando, Oklahoma area and farmed until they retired in 1980. They moved into the town of Orlando where Orly resided. She loved to grow flowers in her yard and pictures show she kept a beautiful yard until her health would no longer cooperate. She was very active in her Orlando Christian Church, helping with many dinners, fundraisers, and helped anyone in need. She loved to sing with a beautiful alto harmony. Her voice is missed, but is singing in the heavenly choir now. Her grandchildren adored her and have sweet memories of visits to her home where she cooked wonderful meals and enjoyed hearing stories about her life. She is preceded in death by her husband, James Wood Lovell, her parents, Perry and Martha Grogan, a sister, Oma Phillips, a niece, Mary Erlene Gutierrez, stepson, James Frederick Lovell, stepdaughter, Patricia Lovell Marion, and a, a step-granddaughter, Sandy Marion. She is survived by a sister, Iva Fultz of Alpena, Arkansas, her daughter-in-law, Janice Lovell of Weatherford, Oklahoma, nieces and nephews, David Fultz, Pam Fultz, Pam Fultz Disharoon, uh, Jill Fultz Wolf and Helen Jane Wilburn, Harold Hoffman, David Phillips, and Karen Phillips. 
She is also survived by nine step great grandchildren, or nine step grandchildren Ralph James Lovell, Randall Anderson Lovell, Rhonda K. Lovell, and Diana Ruth Lovell, and Peggy, Peggy Marion Sowell, Connie Marion Tillery, Jane Marion, Mark Marion, George Bud Marion Jr., and niece in law Pam Cook Martindale, and a dear friend, a neighbor, and caregiver, Kathy Golay, and many step great grandchildren and great great grandchildren. And the request was made that uh, any memorials may be given to any Veterans Association or to the Ro Rosie the Riveter Trust. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And there are those words that Jesus spoke to his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed in the upper room recorded in John chapter 14, beginning with verse 1. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I'm going, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I would like to say this, that uh, if any of the members of the family or friends or neighbors uh, have a word you'd like to share of your recollections of, of Oralee, uh, if you would move up here close to the platform so that we don't have too much uh, uh, dead time in between your comments, but if you would either get close to the platform over here or over here. And uh, I'll just begin by saying this. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, was mentioned in the obituary was the fact that she sang harmony with her strong and beautiful alto voice. And the first comment that my wife Barbara made when uh, about uh, Orly was how much she loved to sit close to Orly when they were in church when she was singing because she sang such a beautiful alto and it helped Barbara to be able to sing along by following Orly and, and her singing. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm Diana Lovell, and I am proud to be the granddaughter of Orly Lovell. My grandfather, James Wood Lovell, married this young, beautiful woman in March of 1944 and they had been working together in uh, Wichita, Kansas on the instrument panels for B-29s. My granddad uh, cut them out and grandma filed them down. There were um, over uh, 19 uh, circles that had to be made in those B-29s that were so critical to winning World War II. When she married my granddad, she became the stepmother of two really cute kids. You might have seen them on the uh, slideshow, uh, Jim and Pat. And when they grew up and married, they had four kids and six kids, so they had ten grandchildren. Um, and grandmother was a wonderful grandmother. We came at least twice a year to their house, and when I reflect back now as an adult, I realize that grandma lived pretty much in a one-bedroom house out in the country. You had to drive on dirt roads for several miles to get there. And can you imagine having to feed our whole family? And we would stay for three days at a time, maybe. And 
you knew she'd been cooking for, gosh, all week before we got there because on the deep freeze in the kitchen, long deep freeze, there'd just be food, brownies and donuts and all these things that she had prepared. And as an adult, I look back and think, where was the grocery store? Right? Where did she get all these things to feed? We were a family of six, and uh, Pat's family would be a family of seven when they came, and it was a lot. And she lived in a one-bedroom house pretty much, but she was, um, she was so remarkable. She had taken the attic and converted it into spaces for these grandchildren to sleep, and it was magical. It was a magical place. Up a tiny little staircase, and um, my brothers had a room, and my sister had a room. It was created by a curtain, and I was always mad that I didn't have a room, that I had to sleep in the same room as mom and dad. And there was, she had to get beds for us and big blankets, and I would try to sneak up and get in bed with my sister. It would be cold, cold. It must have been Christmas time. And through the roof, a little snowflake would come and hit my nose. And I loved that. I thought that was so thrilling. And I remember turning over in bed with my sister, and warm under this enormous amount of blankets, and uh, hearing my brothers squeal as they ran out. They had to go to the outhouse. We got to use the toilet inside. And... Uh, but we'd go down for breakfast, and I remember, gosh, her orange juice tastes so good. I'm like, Mom, why does her orange juice taste better than yours? Oh, because she put sugar in it, that's why. <laughs> and bacon, oh, I can still smell the bacon, and the eggs, and the biscuits. The food was so good. And so she had gone to so much work to get ready for the holidays, and she was a no-drama kind of person. You know, she never created drama. She never gossiped. She never listened to gossip. She was just a rock, a woman of great character, of enormous faith. Um, and she didn't talk a whole bunch. And it wasn't until um, when she got elderly that I would sit with her and listen and talk with her. And I got to learn so much about her life. Um, and she would tell me, she'd reminisce about growing up with her sisters. And I think a lot of you got the handout of her life, and it's just fascinating. And I've always been interested in this tragedy in her life, that when she was six, her mother died. And there were, the mother left behind, her mother Martha left behind three little girls. And I've always thought, oh, if I was dying and I had to leave my children behind, it would be so heart-wrenching and I would want the best for them, that they would have fruitful lives and that they would have long lives. And they have. The three sisters, although two of them are now gone, all lived into their 90s and had wonderful lives. And Grandma's mother died 91 years ago and it still hurts her to think about the loss of her, but now they're reunited. And also, she had some siblings that she never met. She said, I had siblings, I had two brothers and a sister, but they were born and died before I came. And so she can be with them in heaven. And she said in her, in her biography here, her autobiography, that was the saddest part of my young life. You can imagine losing uh, your mother. Her, her bladder had burst in gallbladder surgery. And so... Um, her father raised three girls out on the farm. They had no car. They went to church with a buggy. She told me all about getting electricity for the first time. And Calvin Coolidge was president when she was born. And here in her autobiography, she says, we never wasted anything. Oh, my goodness, is that true? <laughs> never everything plastic ever made she saved in her house because you never know when you're going to use that again. And in the last year or so, she's been taking paper towels and separating them because you could get more use out of those two plies if you separated them. All I can say about grandmother is she was a rock in our family that I thought would always be there. She was always at home. She didn't like to leave home very often. And when I was a child, she would... Um, I got quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one time with him because I was 
the youngest, and I can remember my grandparents, my maternal grandparents, kept me for a week, and then uh, uh, Grandma and Granddad Lovell were going to keep me for a week, and my they lived two hours apart, and I rode the first hour with my maternal grandparents in a fancy car. I think it was a Cadillac in the back where I had to sit real prim and proper with my suitcases and everything, and they kind of lectured me about, you know, behave, and then I, we pulled up to an old rusty a truck, and my grandparents were in there, and I sat on the bench uh, in between them, and we went out to their house, and I got to sit in Granddad's lap while Orderly sat up to the side, and I got to steer, and they were roaring with laughter because I almost took us off a bridge, and and um, I got some really, really good time. And so she, she always made a good home for us, and she was never demanding of anything for herself. And before I was 10, um, about the age of 10, maybe a, a little younger, I was told for the first time she wasn't a biological relative of mine. I thought, so? Uh, okay. I have a stepdaughter, a step-granddaughter, and, uh, and she is not biologically related to me, but yet we're very bonded. And I've thought often of what it means to be step, but uh, she's not really a, a step-grandma. She's been there for us emotionally, and for my father, who is deceased, it supported him and ironed his shirts and helped him get ready to go to college and was always um, a stabilizing force. I loved all the times I got to go with him to play cards um, with their friends. And my family learned all kinds of card games. Nutsy is our favorite card game. It's very fast-paced and so proud of her. To, for being a Rosie the Riveter. I cannot tell you how proud I am. And um, so I just uh, love her and miss her. And I also want to thank um, Kathy Golay and her parents. And Kathy has taken, her late parents, Kathy has taken such good care of her. She's a neighbor and uh, has allowed Grandma to live in her house till the very end of her life and couldn't have enjoyed that freedom that she had without you. And so we thank you so much. Thank you. I wish you hadn't mentioned all that food. I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the bacon and the biscuits. Kathy. Well, I was hoping I was gonna get to sit back and just enjoy everybody else speak. Justy was supposed to do this, my son, but uh, he's still testing positive for COVID. He's not sick, but COVID has really affected a lot of people. And I, initially it affected Orly because she was so lonely, but she's not lonely anymore. And we're so thankful for that. And Diane, you really weren't supposed to get me on the edge of tears before I had to do this. <laughs> so um, other people that weren't able to be here for Pam Martindale, there you go, there's your wink. Um, Pam had so many good memories of Orly, so, so many. All of the trips they made, the laughs, um, Orly questioning her, do you know where we're going? And Pam told me this morning, she said, I had to pull off the side of the road and show her on the map, this is where we're at. They were going to see your dad in uh, Magnolia. So anyways, so many people have good stories. The other grandchildren mentioned the food how she could just go to the cupboard and just create anything out of whatever she had in the cupboard. I love the stories, thank you so much. So, Justy's supposed to do this, I'll give it my best. It says, April 23rd, 1984, my grandma and grandpa Green were taking Orly to Stillwater to celebrate her 61st birthday. They also had plans to stop by the hospital to visit my mother who was in labor. They waited for a few hours at the hospital and nothing was happening. They were about to leave when the nurse told him not to leave. Shortly after, my mother gave birth to me. An hour later, the nurse wheeled my mother and I down the hall and Orly was one of the first people to see me. Since I was born on her birthday, I was given the name Justy Lee in her honor and her namesake. It is something that I take a lot of pride in. Orly was my best, was best friends with my grandma Green. She was there for most Christmases, Thanksgivings, and my birthdays. 
I had many a cup of coffee around my grandparents' breakfast table with her. I sat in the same congregation as her for many years and listened to her beautiful, harmonizing voice. I'm not going to try and duplicate it, but if you've ever heard it, it was beautiful. Orly taught me a valuable life lesson, and that's one of savings. When I was born, she started a college plan for me. Subsequently, I did the same for my children and my nephews because what she did made such an impact on my life. I grew up knowing that Orly was a rosy riveter, but I didn't know what she did. So a few years ago, I asked what plane she worked on, and she said the B-29. And she helped build the instrument gauges. The B-29, I thought? That was, this is such an iconic airplane. My son flies planes, so I'll get to that in a minute. He says, working on this would have been like someone who built the Brooklyn Bridge or the first Corvette. This was the most technologically advanced aircraft of World War II. It was the first bomber aircraft to be pressurized. It could fly higher, faster, farther, and carry more bombs than any other plane. And it was most famous for ending World War II when it dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Orly was proud of the fact that she was a rosy riveter. But I might be more proud. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a pilot for American Airlines, and when we're flying along sharing stories, I, routine, I routinely brag about how was, I was named after a woman who was a rosy riveter on the B-29. In closing, I would like to say that if I had one word to describe Orly, that one word would be strong. She's been through so much in her life, lost her mother at seven years old, the Great Depression, World War II, Korean War, Cold War, working on a farm, and so much more. She had been through so much in her life, and she was still going strong at 97 years old, living on her own, basically unassisted. She was so strong, but she was more than just strong. She was loving, caring, kind, giving. And I was so blessed to have her in my life. I made mention of the fact that uh, how saving she was on things. People that grew up or lived during the Depression uh, understand those things. I grew up in a country home out in the Texas Panhandle. We, did, we didn't have four rooms and a bath. We had four rooms and a path, and we, we, we knew what to do with the old catalogs. First, uh, the first thing you learned was which side to put the flashlight on. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, like I said, I grew up, I was born in the middle of the Depression. In fact, the night I was born, the whole family was depressed. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it, we may be heading for some of those same kind of times again, folks. We need to be prepared and learn the lessons of the past. But at any rate, uh, one of her favorite scriptures, and this really impressed me uh, to think about how, it, how much it meant to her. In Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to His purpose. Now, I can see why this scripture was so special to her. Uh, she was never blessed with biological children of her own. Uh, James, her husband, had biological children that had lost their mother through her passing. And Orly wanted children, and James's children needed a mother. So all things, in spite of circumstances, worked together for good, both for Orly and for this family. God is good. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3-5, through 5, the Apostle Paul writes these words, Praise be the God to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, or the God of all comfort, the King James says, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. The first thing we note from that passage of Scripture is that God is our only source of comfort. Now, it may come through other people, 
He may use other instrumentality, other people to, to bring about that comfort, but ultimately God is the source of it. The second thing that I notice about that is that he comforts us to equip us to be a source of comfort for other people. When we experience his comfort, we can share the things that brought comfort to our hearts and brought encouragement to us as we share with them our faith in Jesus. And then, of course, the third thing is, uh, he says, who comforts us in all our afflictions or all of our troubles. God's comfort is sufficient for the depth of our sorrow. No matter how severe or how deep our sorrow is, God provides adequate comfort to get us through the, the, the circumstances. Uh, another favorite scripture that uh, Orly uh, liked, and uh, the family asked that I mention this one, 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. He says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In all things, give thanks. You know, first of all, I believe that the greatest source of comfort is to develop a grateful heart, to be thankful for what we've had. You know, oftentimes we think in terms of uh, the passing of those that we are close to and that we love, we think of it as a loss. But consider this, you cannot lose what you never had. You cannot lose what you never had. If she was a, a important part of your life, you can give God thanks that he made her a part of your life and your experience. And of course, the, the greatest source of comfort is gratitude for God's gifts, however briefly you had them. It may have been a long experience or it may have been a short experience, but there are many people who bless our lives, sometimes only in passing through. But we ought to give thanks for the fact that we had that experience. In fact, I would suggest to you that there's probably an empty spot that's just the size of Orly in, in your life that uh, has made your life meaningful and, and a blessing. And then he says uh, that we are to give thanks in all circumstances. Now, let me ask you a question. What does the term all circumstances, what, what does that cover? How much does that cover? How broad, how, how wide is that statement? In all circumstances, folks, that's the good times, the bad times, the fun times, the sad times. In all circumstances, give thanks. You were blessed to have Orly as a part of your life because that was God's will. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. What you've had is a gift from God and calls for your expressions of gratitude and praise to Him. So give thanks that God blessed you with her in your life and you will find comfort because as we said, you cannot lose what you never had. I thank God for the, the time that I knew Orly when I first got acquainted with her was when after the tornado in 1999 blew our town and our church house away down at Mall Hall, I was preaching there. And uh, while we were in the process of rebuilding, uh, we were invited by the Orlando congregation to their preacher had resigned and they invited us to come and we'd do the preaching and the music and they would provide the facilities. And uh, we met with that congregation for uh, close to a year. And during that time, we became acquainted with her. And then uh, one of the things that I crossed my mind when you're talking about the fact she lived in Kansas and Arkansas, uh, I've been in Kansas and I've been in Arkansas and a lot of those same places, uh, which tells you that I can't stay anywhere very long. Uh, uh, when they start putting my picture up in the post office, it's time to move on. But uh, the fact that uh, uh, we had some of the similar experiences and life experiences uh, meant a lot to me. And, and uh, we met with the congregation for uh, about a year and she was always there. She was always there and uh, she just almost never missed until her health began to fail. And uh, uh, so uh, we're really going to miss her. Um, 
I couldn't help but think when it talked about the fact that she was 97, actually 97 and a half, uh, when I was preaching in the church in Jewel, Kansas, we had a lady about that age, and uh, as she began to decline somewhat in, in her uh, health, uh, she told me she wanted me to do her funeral service, and I said, okay. She said, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit worried. She said, some of the friends that I knew that have passed on at a much younger age, uh, I'm so old, they probably think I didn't make it. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't think there's any doubt that she's safely in the arms of Jesus right now and uh, singing that beautiful song, praising God. Father, we uh, come to you in the name of Jesus again. We thank you for the experience that we had of knowing Orly, and we thank you that uh, along with her, we shared a common faith in your son, Jesus. Lord, we pray that as we go from this place today that uh, you will uh, give us comfort, encouragement, but most of all, Lord, fill our hearts with gratitude. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.